Ladies and gentlemen, here is Reese. Okay, uh, hi everybody. My name's Reese, and I'm here today to talk about uh, top tools for WordPress SEO to use as well as Yoast stuff. Um, when I decided to do this talk, I thought a lot of people they use Yoast's products, so I wanted to talk about some other things. Um, massive disclaimer to begin with: use Yoast products as well. They are pretty much the best ones out there. <laughs> so this is this is basically other things that you can use. So to begin with, um, when people talk about SEO, they generally mean, I want to rank high in Google. Um, now, Google has a very much a love-hate, mainly hate relationship with SEOs in general, but they do provide tools to web, uh, website owners um, that can help you along. The first tool is Google Analytics, which is free. And basically, Google Analytics tells you how many people arrived at your site, where they visited, and where they have left by. Um, this is not strictly an SEO tool. This is a tool generally for mo anybody who runs a website. And show of hands really quickly, how many people are familiar with analytics? So pretty much everybody. So yeah, it's, it's not a, you know, most people are familiar with it. But here's something you may not know. Um, when carrying out SEO projects, you generally need to prioritize work. And one of the things you do to begin with, which is more user experience, is to try and find, um, is to try and speed up the, slot, uh, the site. Um, and it can be a case of prioritizing certain pages and prioritizing certain, um, certain areas of the site. So if you go in Google Analytics and go to behavior, site speed, and site suggestions, you can find the slowest pages on your site. You can also find the most popular pages on the site, and those are good pages to start prioritizing because they're the busiest pages on the site and the slowest. It also integrates with Google PageSpeed to offer some sort of recommendations. Now, some of those recommendations you will not be able to do because they're like they pull in things from other services, but you, you may it may give you a few ideas on where to start. Um, and some recommendations may be site-wide, and others may be for individual pages. The next tool is Google Webmasters. Again, this is free and is formerly known as Google Webmaster Tools. This one gives you a little bit of a technical overview of your site and how Google sees it. So it tells you how quick it took to browse your site, what was the, the bandwidth used, and various other URLs on your site to check. Um, you can also then provide it with some information how you want Google to see your site. So you can provide it if you want a www prefix or a non-www prefix. Um, if you've got a .io domain, you probably don't want to rank in Google's Indian Ocean territory, because there's probably not that many people. So you probably want to rank in the Western world. So you can specify the country you wish to rank for. Um, and you can also def define what site links show up when people Google you. Um, there all, is also some ranking data as well. It's probably the best ranking data you'll get from Google without paying them. So quick show of hands. How many familiar people are familiar with Google Webmaster Tools? OK, so a few of you. Again, here's my little top tip um, for it, is to switch on email alerts. And you can do that by going to the gear icon in the top right-hand corner. I don't know if you can see that. And go to Search Console Preferences, and you can switch on email alerts. When I first, when I did this, it is actually switched on by off by default. Now, this was about four years ago because it's linked to your Google account. So it may be switched on by default now. Basically, what this will tell you is it'll tell you if they think your site's been hacked, um, if a manual penalty has been applied. Um, and it'll also tell you things like, oh, yeah, by the way, you need to update WordPress. Now, WordPress itself will be quicker in telling you to update WordPress but this is something else that you've got. It, is the, it goes to the email address that's linked to your Google account, so make sure that somebody is checking. And if nothing else from this talk, uh, please make sure that analytics and webmaster tools are on your site. The reason being is that one of the questions I get all the time, um, particularly in Manchester WordPress user group, is, Reese, who do you recommend for SEO? And I've got a few people who I do recommend. SEO's jobs generally rely on interpreting data and making the best use of data. The more data you can give them, 
the better job that they can do. So my advice would be, if you go away from this talk, make sure you've got Google Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics on your site. Even if you never check them, and even if you don't think you're ever going to use SEO, make sure, just, just make sure, because who knows what tomorrow may bring. Sorry. OK, so when generally you start an SEO campaign, most uh, SEOs will generally tell you to install this tool called Google Tag Manager, which is free. And what this does, it allows, allows you basically to easily add meta tags to your site to validate services. So you can have things like Google AdWords and things like um, Crazy Egg, which is like a heat map tracking tool and things like that. It's quite useful because it allows people to add things to your site. I mean, when I say it allows people to add to you, it doesn't allow everybody to add things to your site. So basically anybody who's allowed to. Um, add things to your site uh, without playing around with templates and things like that. Um, I will show you another tool that does something very, very similar. The beauty of this, there are two <coughs> beautiful things about this. First one, it has an audit trail. So you can see what people have been doing to your site and adding things, and you can tell people off if they've been doing something naughty. Um, the other really good thing about this, um, and this is for people who are generally not very comfortable with code, um, quick story for you, I've got a client, one of my clients is an author, and he sells his books on Amazon, e-books on Amazon, iTunes, Kobo, I think it's another one, and various other um, publishing services. His way of converting on a site is people, he doesn't get conversions on the site itself. His conversions are people leaving his site to go to Amazon, to go to iTunes and things like that. Now, there is a way to... If, you, if you're familiar with code, um, to allow Google Analytics to track it, it is quite complex. Um, it allows you to do well quite a lot, but if you want something very, very simple, you can set this up in Google Tag Manager really, really easily. So if you're not familiar with code, use this instead. Okay, uh, next I'm going to talk about a few tools. Um, tools are basically non-WordPress related tools that I use. Okay, the first one is one called Screaming Frog uh, SEO Spider, which is free up to 500 pages. And if you want to browse more than 500 pages, it's 99 pounds a year. And it is a website crawler and spider tool. So what happens is you, you, go, you go to a web, uh, you put your website or, the, or a list of URLs you want to check into uh, the top bar, which is on the top of this page. I don't know if you can see it. And it will go through your site, crawl the data, and, or it'll call the list of URLs you've added. Um, and it's a very, very quick way to, to give like a basic overview of all the pages on your site. Um, it will allow you to see your status codes. So it'll tell you if it's 200, a 301, or a 404. It'll tell you what those status codes mean. So if you don't know that a 404 is a page not found or a 301's moved permanently, it will tell you. It'll tell you the content type. So if it's JavaScript, JPEG, uh, HTML page, or CSS, or whatever any meta information associated with it, so title tags, headers, whatever, and also where it's linked from. Uh, two reasons I use this. The first one is if I, uh, I did a migration once and I had to check that 1,600 URLs were going from one place uh, to the other. I'm quite a stubborn person and I did it all manually <laughs> and it took me about two hours. And then the head of SEO where I was working with um, turned around and said, oh, here's this tool. And it took him about three minutes to do exactly the same job. So that's quite useful. Um, the thing which I use it kind of on a month to month by month basis is to spot dead links that are on your site. Um, so you can go through there and you can kind of find four or four links. You can find out where they're linked from and you can go ahead and, and fix them. Now, there are a lot of broken link checker plugins out there. And you may be wondering why I would recommend this over a broken link checker. The reason being is broken link checker plugins generally add quite a bit of bloat to the database. Um, this is actually really lightweight. If Google can spy to your site, this can. So it's pretty safe and, it, and, it, and it's quite lightweight. So I would recommend that. Next tool is a tool called Majestic, which is free for your own sites. But uh, if you want to look at other people's sites, it's £44 a month. What this is, is it will check backlinks that are pointing to your site. I'm quite old school when it comes to SEO, so I'm still like of the 
keywords and backlinks and everything like that. So it's, it's, it's moved on a lot since, since I've probably uh, got out of the game. But uh, yeah, so this basically checks the backlinks pointing to your site. It tells you if they're uh, clean links, so if they're no follow or do follow. Um, it tells you the anchor text, so what, how they're linking to you. Is it through an image or is it through a, you know, is it through a, a keyword? And they also give an opinion on how strong uh, that link is. So they, they crawl the internet and they, 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 they have their own algorithms, which is separate from Google's, um, but they give an opinion on how strong those links are. Basically, every now and again, it's good to see who links to you and if there are any bad links that are linking to you and you can go in and, and check them. So if you have a load of... If you have a load of links with the keyword, say, like Viagra or something, you know that something's up and you probably want to jump on this. OK. Um, next tool is a tool called Surplab, which is free. Um, but there is a paid one, which starts at $4.99 per bot per month in dollars. OK. Um, this is another one of my old school things. It's a rank checker. It's a very face basic yet functional rank checker. My advice would be not to rely on rank checking. Uh, treat it as a metric, be aware of it, but don't make it the be all and end all of your site. Um, a very quick example, if we were all to get our mobile phones out, don't all get your mobile phones out, but if we all were to get your mobile phones out and check for something like um, plumbers, for example, um, you'd probably all end up getting the top 10 results pretty much around London unless you've been looking for plumbers recently. When you all go home, and assuming you don't live literally 20 minutes away from the Emirates over there, um, it will tell you your other rank check. It will tell you plumbers from where you are located. Um, it also things that you've looked at and previous search history. So they are very, very personalized. But this is just going to give you like an overview of ranks. What I do... Oh, hold on one second. What I do is generally when, I, um, when I'm writing a blog post or I'm writing a blog page, I will put whatever, if there is like a Yoast focus keyword, so if I want some sort of Google traffic going later on, if it's not just a, if it's not just a news post, I will put whatever the Yoast focus keyword is into Surplab so I can track it. And it gives you like 30 days worth of data for free. So it's, uh, I, I just find it really, really useful. OK, um, the next tool is a tool called Answer the Public, and I love Answer the Public. Generally speaking, when people come up to like, the first line of the fence, when people say, oh, how do I do good SEO, is they start with the line, oh, create great content, which is really kind of, I, I, I struggle with that. And I, the reason being is it's like saying, oh, the reason, the way in which you can win the 100 meters gold medal is to run really fast. <laughs> And there isn't, there's, it's a little bit of a disconnect. It's going from one thing to another. Um, and nobody really tells you exactly how or to create great content. So this is quite a good tool to start with. Um, it's a tool to kind of generate content ideas for your site. So for example, um, I've got a Pilates client, or I've done some work for a Pilates client. And I, you go in here and you put in the word Pilates. It will find keywords, suggestions, based on Pilates. The other thing it will do is begin to ask a few questions. So it'll say, what is Pilates? Where can I do Pilates? Various other things. And it produces it in a really kind of nice graph like that. Um, you can then go through all these keywords. This is not Pilates. This is WrestleMania, because I was at WrestleMania last week. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm jet lagged, but never mind. Uh, yeah, so these, these are all like keywords related to it. And you can go through these and get relevant ideas for pages and blog posts. This is a really easy way to get like generated traffic to your site because you're basically answering questions that people have. And over time, people are asking more and more questions, and they're asking questions through, the first, um, through search. Um, a classic example is you. How more and more people now are not are searching using like the mobile phone and voice. So you're not going to go Pilates Manchester. You're going to go, OK, Google, or hey, Siri, where can I find Pilates 
training, I don't know, that's a word, in Manchester. So you, you're, going, you're going to get more formed question keywords. Um, the way you can see this in, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is things like newspapers do this all the time because they have pages on their site which are um, things like what day is Christmas Day. And it seems like a really strange thing to put in a newspaper. Maybe not, I don't know. But uh, the reason being is they want to rank for that phrase, and then it'll be like, okay, oh yeah, by the way, if you want to go to Lapland and see Santa Claus, uh, here's the flights from you know, your nearest airport, by the way, and, and, that's, and that's a way of getting traffic generated to the site because they use all their things. But uh, that's just a quick example, and I do like answer the public. Okay. Link building and outreach. Uh, five years ago, this was so, so easy. It really, really was because it was basically spamming and it worked so well. And anybody who said it didn't work well is a pathological liar as far as I'm concerned. Um, nowadays, there's a lot more in common with traditional PR and that is a talk in itself and I'm not the man to give you that talk uh, because I don't like speaking to people. Uh, so these are, these are things that I find useful. And uh, these are more like geeky tools to kind of reach out to people and, and things like that. Hold on, I'm going to drink. Okay, the first one is a tool called HARO, which stands for Help a Reporter Out. And it's free. So what you do is you sign up on this site and you choose your areas of interest. And they're things like uh, business, uh, tech, <coughs> environment, sport, things like that. It, it also does separates by location. So there's a UK list, I think there's a European list and an Australian list or something like that. And then three times a day, every single weekday, you will generally get an email that looks something like this. this. And, excuse me. and it's basically reporters asking for help on, rep on uh, various things. So if we have a look at this, the first one there is how, how will Brazil's recession affect its ICT sector? Now, I don't know about you, but I know nothing about Brazil's IT sec sector, and I didn't even know they were in a recession. <laughs> so I can't really offer an opinion about that. However, generally, on average, about three or four times a month, I can find ones that I can reply to and actually give an, op an opinion which may be worth something. And then what will happen will be they will, they will write the piece on, on, on or whatever their thing is, and they'll include my talk, they'll include my opinion within it, and then they'll cite me as a source. And it varies, you know, there are a lot of requests, it varies from simple anonymous requests. Um, I have seen the CNN and the BBC in here, so there are some good uh, sources in there. And my advice is, if you don't hear back from them, uh, either they email you back or there's, there's no sort of link tracking tool or things like that. Whatever you wrote to them, turn your reply into a blog post. I have been known to outrank the pieces that they've written, which they didn't include me, which can annoy them a few times, but never mind. Should have included me. Um, so yeah, there's that. Okay, the next tool, Crystal. Crystalnose.com is free, and this is terrifying. You have to sign up via either your Facebook or your Twitter or your LinkedIn. And when you do, I was going to do this with somebody in here, but I decided against it. So I decided to do it with myself. Is the, it builds a profile on you and your contacts. And then it kind of looks at the language and looks at how you will speak to people. And it tells you how to send emails and speak to them. So for example, if you are emailing me, use an emoticon. Now, if anybody's ever received an email by me or checked me on Twitter, I use a lot of emoticons in my emails. So generally, emoticons are good because I'm really bad at reading between the lines, so a smiley face is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, when working with me, um, schedule meetings over food and drink. The fact that I picked up a double XL uh, T-shirt shows that I quite like my food and my drink. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's, that's really, really, uh, you know, so yeah, when working with me, food and drink, good. It also gives you some predefined templates, uh, such as inviting people to an event, asking for advice, asking for a favor, 
or asking for a raise, which is quite interesting. So my piece of homework for everybody in this room is my boss, Alex Moss, is on Crystal. So feel free to connect with him and ask him on my behalf to give him me a raise. Thank you very much. OK, uh, just going to finish off a little bit with some WordPress plugins. First one, insert headers and footers. This is one of those plugins that doesn't leave any sort of anything to the imagination because it insert, allows you to put headers and footers into the page, a little bit like Google Tag Manager. Um, I put this in because some people are a bit scared about giving Google all their data. So if you don't want to give Google all your data and still want to add headers and footers really, really easily, use this. The reason why I like this is that this plays really well with Yoast SEO. Um, there are a lot of plugins out there that will strip Yoast SEO's data. Um, this one adds, you know, is, is to use in conjunction with it, and it doesn't, uh, and it, it plays really, really well. Next one, uh, Jetpack, which is also free. Uh, most of it's free, and it has a module called the Enhanced Distribution Module. So. WordPress.com has a big pipe of po posts. It's like a fire hose. And every single post that's publicly available, to the best of my knowledge, uh, gets put in that fire hose and sent out over the internet. What Enhanced Distribution does is it puts your WordPress.org or self-hosted blog posts into said pipe or fire hose. And whilst Google doesn't read the fire hose, uh, many other services do. So lots and lots more people become aware of your blog post a lot quicker. Excuse me. And it helps to get your blog post indexed a lot faster. So for what it's worth, you might as well just activate it if you've got Jetpack in installed. Excuse me. OK, uh, next one, this is quite a new development called um, the Accelerated Mobile Pages Project. Uh, and this is a plugin called AMP for WordPress. And AM, uh, Accelerated Mobile Pages is a project backed by Google, and this is an automatic plugin running on it. Now, Google does back a lot of uh, projects, uh, such as Google Author Profiles, which is dead, Google Wave, which is dead, and Google Plus, which is dying, you know, so it's nearly there. Um, so all because Google, Google backs, it doesn't mean that it's going to be around forever, but this seems to be the one that they're getting behind now. AMP basically is a way to serve content over mobile faster, and Google does seem to suggest that they want to um, rank sites that have their standard, because there's four standards for some reason, um, better in Google. Now, they, I don't think they're doing it straight away, but they are marking sites as saying, this is an AMP backed page. So anyway, what you do is you install this plugin, and you go to any page on your site with the forward slash AMP. And it produces a very, very simple page with little styling and almost no scripts. And it is quick. It is very quick, because it's a very quick way to load a lot of content. The problem with it is that it doesn't work well with complicated sites. Um, E-commerce sites, it doesn't really work with particularly well at the moment. Um, but if you are a content-rich, heavy site, you might as well um, add this plugin to so you can rank better in um, mobile search, in theory. And what happens is the, it canonicalizes to the original blog URL, so you won't have like duplicate content listings in, 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 in the search engines. And you can actually template it as well, so you don't have to use the original styling, but it, it requires a little bit of knowledge of uh, filters and actions. One of the other standards is Facebook standard, uh, which is completely different. And there's another plugin called PageFrog, which uh, uses Facebook Instant Articles and Google AMP pages. So it does both Facebook and Google. And the other beauty of this is if you're not familiar with templating, is that it does allow you to use simple stylings. Um, it also allows you to integrate your Google Analytics. Now, I'm not entirely sure if AMP does yet. 
Uh, it should do, and considering it's a Google standard, you would think they'd include Google Analytics, but eh, there we go. So it allows you to um, style things very, very easily. Um, you do have to activate it on every single blog post, which is a bit of a pain. But uh, again, if you go to forward slash AMP and go to this page, uh, you get a little bit of styling. I don't know if you can see that, but right at the top, it's purple, and it has my picture instead of the WordPress logo. Um, from speaking to people, uh, some people have had problems with PageFrog, and some people have had problems with AMP not validating Google Webmaster Tools. Um, I've got both activated, and I haven't had any problems. So it's still quite a new standard. Um, so it's going to be changing. And there's four standards, because Apple have one, and somebody else has one, and I can't remember who. Oh, I think there's like a, an open standard as well. OK. Finally, uh, check search engine visibility on migration. And allow me to indulge myself for a minute, because this is my plugin. <laughs> and it's free. So another quick show of hands. This box in WordPress. Put your hands up if you've ever ticked that box on a staging site. OK. Keep your hand up if you have moved from a staging site to a live site and not unticked that box. <laughs> Oh, there are a few. There are a few honest people in here. Okay, that's good. Okay, because I've done it so many times, and I've put I've put dev sites live. It's it's, it's great when they get inquiries as well. It's it's great. It's like got it for your dev site. It's like okay. Um, this will tell you basically if the search engine box is ticked, and Yoast plugin does this as well. Um, however, it will also tell you it, basically if it is ticked, it will say, are you aware of being of it being ticked? The other thing is, should you ever change domain? So if you ever change the, you know, the site URL, so if you go from dev.site.co.uk to site.co.uk, it will check again to make sure your site, it's still ticked. If so, it will ask you that question again. So therefore, you can stop putting sites live with that box ticked. So thank you very much for that in indulgence. And thank you very much, everybody. All right, thank you very much indeed, Rhys. Um, I suspect we might have quite a few questions yeah. on the floor. Uh, quick, uh, if you have a question for Rhys, please raise your hand and we'll get to you as soon as you can. Okay, we'll start at the front and work towards the back. Hi, Rhys. Uh, just a quick question about uh, the AMP and the other plugins. Yeah, how does that, uh, is it necessary if you've got a responsive site, is, would you still recommend installing these plugins? Uh, yes. Uh, basically, responsive will depends on how well the, the site's coded. But generally speaking, um, responsive basically is just a, the actual full site shrank down in, in uh, width, but not necessarily taking a lot of the scripts out. So if you've got, say, like a slider, mm -hmm. for example, um, you shouldn't use sliders at all. But if you have got a slider, um, you probably don't want it on mobile because it'll dominate the actual thing. So why would you load the scripts to it? Because generally speaking, what, when responsive, some people when they do responsive, it's just like display none. So they still load all the scripts, but they hide it. So AMP will strip out a lot of the things, um, which which will make your site a lot faster as well. And say, for example, if you got uh, like WP Rocky or Cloudflare, do you, would you still? Is it still? I right still would use it. I mean, I've, I, I'll be I'll be perfectly honest. I've not, I've not played with um, WP Rocket or, or Cloudflare, um, but I would probably still use it because I think as well is that it does cache something on there. It's it's still quite a new standard. So, um, but generally speaking, the the smaller your site is, the quicker it will load anyway. So. Yeah, it makes it kind of makes sense, and it's more for scripts as well. So you don't really want to load Thank too you. many scripts. Okay. Sorry, is there any reason why you haven't mentioned, say, Moz or Ahrefs for? Because we, we come from a very much an old-fashioned link building background, and we yeah. have to obviously go and undo lots of reputation issues for people, yeah. and we have to use all the tools, and it costs a lot of money. Yeah. So you know. Um, I only I only use tools that I use, so that that's why. I mean, I know Ahref is one. Uh, Moz is another one, um, for what you know, 
from my background, I've always used Majestic, which is why I mentioned it. So I, it's not because I don't, I'm not aware of them. I just, I, I would feel bad coming up on stage and saying, oh yeah, use this tool, by the way, I've never used it. Sure. So, so, so that's why. But yeah, I, there's nothing wrong with them or anything, and I'm pretty sure they're very, very good. As SEM Rush, I was talking with somebody last night about, that's another tool. Um, so there are other tools out there. It's just these are the ones that I use, which is why, why, why I recommended them. Okay, do we have another question? Maybe something more from the back of the room over there. Thank you. Hi, right, do you think it's worth installing Jetpack just for that one uh, feature? Because it seems like quite a large plugin with loads of things. Um, it's up to you. Uh, from my understanding, Jetpacks can is very good at, if you switch off certain rules, if you switch off like certain packages, except for you know if a package is install is not activated, should I say, it will not run on your site, those packages. So it's actually quite it can be quite lightweight to the best of my knowledge. And they seem to know what they're doing. So um, my yeah, it's it's for for one thing you may not want to put that on, but even if you do, it probably won't add a huge amount of blow to your site, generally speaking, because it's all it, they they are quite light if you take those packages off, generally. Okay, a further question or okay, I get to answer some questions now. It's okay, really cool. Um, so uh, so AMP is coming through. That's yep. quite new. Uh, Facebook Instant yeah. Articles. Apple News, yeah. the open standard, um, are those actually making as big a difference as we all went, Gah! when we saw them appear, what, maybe two, three months ago? Yeah. Or do you think it's, it shouldn't worry about them too much and the core tools are still what it's about? Yeah. Um, from what I have seen with... First of all, the sites that load generally are a lot quicker. Yeah. So if you've got a content rich, they work really well for news-based sites. For, for those ones, it loads really, really quick. And if you care about your content, you want your content loading quicker. As far as ranking goes, I've not... The only way I've noticed AMP is in the news section of Google is that any page, any site that has the an AMP activated, it will put AMP next to it. That's all I've seen so far. People seem to be talking about it being like, could be, you know, could be quite a big thing, but I haven't quite seen it yet. But it can take time. Okay, we might be okay for now. We might be okay for now. Uh, further question? Oh, there we go, against the wall over there. Over there. Uh, I think we've, this, we've got time for a few more. Yeah. So, uh, re review your notes of the presentation. Maybe you have another question. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, when you do a search in Google, sometimes what comes up is. Um, like a stars, or there's a picture, or there's extra information, yeah. which Google picks up. What is that? Uh, so, generally speaking, those are what they call schema, uh, S-C-H-E-M-A dot org. Um, it's a way of structuring your data around certain things. So the stars generally are for things like reviews. So, um, a very, very quick example, one, one you can do is, um, and they kind of share a lot of data. So things like recipes um, show up and things like that. It's a way of putting data into your site. And it's like a HTML language, I think, at the moment. You c I think there are other ways of doing it. Um, and if Google recognizes that data, it will generally display it, dependent on how well it views your site. So. A good example would be um, cinemas, for example. There is a, there is a, there is a standard for like um, cinema listings or film listings. So it will say, right, Batman versus Superman is on at 6, uh, 6 10, 7, 20, you know, whatever time. And you list all the times. You list the, uh, you, could, you, you say the film name, and then you can also link to the review of it. So... If you think it's good or bad, then it will it will list the star rating as well. Um, so that's something called schema.org, um, which I you could probably check out. But it, it is quite it's fairly straightforward to set up. Um, one of Google's tools as well is the rich. I didn't put it this in. The rich 
uh, snippet checker, which will um, allow you to view, once you've actually structured your page to include schema.org data, you can, go, you can put that URL into this checker and it will validate it to make sure that it looks okay and everything's set up. Um, and, but when, when will Google get round to your site once you've done that remains to be seen. But it does depend on what you're using it for. Um, a lot of SEO companies I know got into trouble a few years ago from Google because what they did was they gave themselves five-star ratings on their homepage and Google was saying, oh yeah, this is a five-star SEO company and it wasn't. So they got in trouble, but yeah. Okay, any more questions? I think in that case then, what we might do is wind up, because I'm sure quite a few people would like to have a one-to-one -one conversation. <laughs> we should probably end up being... <laughs>